Hello, this is Mad Hatter. Today I'm going to talk to you about something that's been really big on this channel and a lot of people ask questions about and that's how to get started with pack making. Now today we're going to talk about some specifics with packs that may or may not be obvious to you and let's get into it. And today we're going to be making a pack that allows you to add variants to whatever block you want in Minecraft. Before we get too deep in here, I want to call out that there is a website, bedrock.dev. It is a wonderful resource, and it has a Discord attached to it. These people are amazing. They have taught me everything I know about making resource packs, and they have done so much work to making it accessible to other people. It is unreal how cool these people are and how much they have helped the Bedrock community. They have made things like Structure and Bedrock Technical Resource Pack possible, even if they don't know it. So, if you don't know about that site or that Discord group, you should jump in and give them a thanks. They are making a lot of this possible, and I am referencing a lot of their material in this video, so that way you can learn from them. The links to their stuff is in the description. So, let's talk about the difference between add-ons, resource packs, and behavior packs. An add-on is a combination of a resource pack and a behavior pack. That is it. It is a behavior pack that needs a resource pack for it to actually work. So it's the combination of the two. Let's jump into what's a resource pack. A resource pack defines what you see in your client when you're playing on some server, any server. So that means it only appears for you that way, unless the server forces you to download a resource pack, but that's another thing. If it only appears to you that way, that means you can do a lot of things on your side that do not impact the server, do not disable cheats, do not do any of that. So you could do things like you can have outlines around blocks, you can change the textures of blocks, you could change the uh, pattern of the trap doors so that they are random. You could change bookcases for their, where they're random. And that's actually what we're going to talk about later in the video is how to make your own pack that makes random bookcases because I think that's like a really cool, simple first pack for people. You can also change the shape of entities. I have a pack that we call the Bedrock Technical Resource Pack that mainly Bud and I have worked on. But what it does is it changes the shape of armor stands and the player to tell you key information about Minecraft Bedrock. It doesn't require you to do a whole bunch of wonky things in the game. It just shows you how to, it just shows you what is actually happening visually without touching what's happening actually. Other things that you could change are the user interface. If you haven't seen, Bud put this pack together where you can drop all the items in your inventory or you can bulk transfer. That's a pure resource pack. It doesn't touch the server. It's amazing what you can do in a resource pack. Don't cut it short. Don't think you have to jump directly to a behavior pack to do cool things. You just have to be extremely creative when you figure out how to do it in a texture pack or a resource pack, whatever you want to call it. Behavior packs. Behavior packs do not touch your client side, meaning they don't touch what you see. They touch how the core game works to most extents. So a behavior pack can change things like mob pathfinding, can add new items to the game. They can change how severe potion effects are, the size of creeper explosions. They can add new types of mobs. They can add new structures to the game. They can change the way that the world generates. They could change everything about how the server you play on behaves, but they don't generally sh change the way your client works. So you're, they are separate. That's why there's add-ons, which are a combination of the two, in which case you can make the game play very differently than what it would normally play. This video is going to cover resource packs. Like I said earlier, we're going to talk about how to do a texture pack that changes the bookshelf to be randomly dis uh, distributed textures. So let's first get a bookshelf and let's go out of F5 and we're going to place these down. If you notice, bookshelves are one of the most boring blocks in the game. They are 
absolutely identical, pixel for pixel. They have no variance, and it is sort of a shame. Like, it's just a repeated texture, and if you put a big wall like that together, it looks very boring. So, let's jump into it. First thing, there is a magic string that I'm going to put in the description. I don't know exactly where your files are located on your phone or whatever else, but there is a magic string that could take you to your folder for where your Minecraft data is stored on Windows. And there's this folder called a development resource pack. A develop development resource packs reload without having to relaunch the game. I have a number of them here that we have been working on. I'm going to make a new folder. A resource pack is just a folder that has specific files in it with specific places for each thing. So first thing that we're going to do is we're going to name this folder random book shelves, right? Simple enough. Okay. Now the next thing that you need to do is you need to make a file that is a text file called manifest.json. And I'm going to do it here. And do not capitalize it. If you capitalize it, it will behave differently. And it's gonna tell me, do you wanna change it? And I'm gonna say yes. I use a program called Notepad++, and that's just because I like this better than most other text editors, but you are not required to use Notepad++. It's just my preferred text editing tool. So I am copying the basic manifest.json from the project setup page in bedrock.dev. Now, there is some things that you have to change. This pack name needs to be whatever you want it to be, but it is only for display purposes in Minecraft. So we can make this random book shelves, and I will spell things wrong. Don't worry about that. So, or sorry, the this is the name, this is the description, and this last thing is the universal unique ID. So where do you get a universally unique ID? There is an algorithm that exists for generating them. Um, but what I usually use, I usually use this website and I just hit copy and it will generate a new one when you refresh. Those numbers are universally unique. They, you do not need to worry about somebody else getting a similar one. Next, I'm going to refresh and copy a new one. And I'm going to put it down here. Now, this says type data pack. We don't want to type data pack. We actually want a type resources. And the reason we want type resources is because we are doing a resource pack only. And this tells the game how to treat this. So what this does is it tells Minecraft what to display, what to display as a description, gives it a unique ID. This is actually how you can tell if there's duplicate packs installed. It just looks at this number. Then it tells it it's a texture pack, and then it tells it that there is a universally unique ID for that texture pack there. That's all we have to do in this manifest file. You can close it and we can move on to the next one. I'm not going to close it because I need it for, uh, I, I want my Notepad++ instance to stay open. So back into our folder, we're gonna create a new folder called textures. You must spell this right. Now we're going to make a new file. Again, it's going to be a text document and we're going to make a file called terrain textures dot json yes i'm going to change the type now the terrain textures dot json i am also grabbing this from a tutorial on dot what this has is a bunch of default information they these are straight out of the wiki i did not change them but we will get to get to that as we go first thing that we need to do is we're going to change this to something for our manifest i'm going to change it to random bookshelves just so it doesn't overlap with other people's stuff i am not going to go into these other settings they will work as is but we do need to change the bookshelf 
Now, you can download the default packs from bedrock.dev as well. And that has every default pack for a very, very long time. Now, what I'm going to do is look through the default pack and make sure I get the correct name for the bookshelves. And there's going to be a terrain texture in the default uh, example packs from Mojang. And I'm going to go look in here. This is the default one. I'm going to search for book bookshelves top. Actually, we're going to look for just the normal bookshelves texture. We're going to go back and we're going to change dirt to bookshelves. And then we're going to change the variations to be bookshelf one, bookshelf two, bookshelf three. And because I want to show off this as well, we're going to put in weights. That is done by just a simple comma here and you can change this to be 10%, 50%, 20%, or so on and so forth. And you can add more textures however you want. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to save that, and we're gonna go back to our folder because most of this is just folders. Actually, let's go look. If you see this, this is the path to where the pictures need to be. Textures, blocks. So we need to make a blocks folder. Let's make a new folder and call it blocks. Now again, I'm going to grab the terrain or the from the default pack. I'm going to go into blocks and I'm going to grab the bookshelf block. So I'm just going to copy that uh, PNG in there and I'm going to edit it with a program called A Spray. You do not have to use A Spray. It is a paid program and not everybody can afford to buy it. However, I'm going to use it because I own it and I like it. You can use any image editor. You can use paint if you want, but I do recommend finding one that has transparencies. It will make your life so much easier if you have access to transparencies. Paint do generally doesn't have that as far as I'm aware. Okay, A Sprite is a editor that is going to look a little bit clunky and a little bit uh, kludgy, but what it can do that a lot of other ones can't is it can actually edit per pixel, pixel perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase a few of the books just for fun. We're going to just pick a few of them out and make some of the bookshelves not perfectly full. And maybe what we'll do is we'll make this book look like it's tipping over. And then we will grab a few more colors like that. It sort of looks like it's tipping over. I'm not the best pixel artist, but you kind of get the idea of what I was going for there. Now, what we're going to do is export this, export as, I'm going to browse, and I'm going to name this bookshelf two save export and i'm going to rename this one to be bookshelf one and then what we're going to do is we're going to reopen that original and bookshelf one now with this bookshelf i think i'm just going to make the whole top uh empty which means just go like this and color it in we'll leave the bottom exactly the same this is not going to be perfect it's not going to look exactly right but it's going to be enough for this demonstration now we're going to export three save export now i've got three pngs and they are just pictures like that and now what we're going to do is go back to minecraft and see if we screwed things up we're going to go to this world we're going to add a resource pack active and you can see random bookshelves. You see, I've got a missing texture there. We'll get to that in a second. We're gonna hit play. So if any of you were paying very close attention, you may have figured out what I did incorrect. And what that is, was a spelling error. And that is a classic Hatter spelling mistake. I put terrain textures with an S at the end rather than terrain texture.json and that caused it not to work. But now after we load in with no changes to the code other than to uh, fix that typo, you can see we're getting varied textures on the 
bookshelf. And the way that this works actually is it's based upon the X, Y, Z coordinate. So if you put a block in a given spot, it will always have the same texture. But if you move the block to a different spot, it will always have a different texture. So it is basically randomly weighted based upon the location and the seed. So now we can have variable bookshelves and it's a lot more visually interesting than when we had the texture pack off. So last thing, and this is a cosmetic thing, you don't probably don't like this pink and um, this pink and black texture missing thing. That is really easy to fix. Let's go do that really quick. We're going to go back into our folder just right here. We're gonna go back up to the root where we have the manifest and we're gonna add one more file. What that's gonna be is a picture. I'm just gonna steal the picture of the bookshelf that's uh, sort of random and I put it there. Now the last thing we gotta do is rename that picture. That picture needs to be named Pack Icon. Oops, wrong one. We put bookshelf here and we're going to rename it Pack Icon. I'm gonna copy paste so I don't make another typo. And now if I, well, I might need to actually relaunch Minecraft. Give me one second. Now if I go to global resources and packs, you can see I have random bookshelves and it's got my pack icon right there. And it still works just the same. That is just a cosmetic detail that you may or may not want. Let's review just very quickly. Bedrock.dev, super awesome. Best people to work with for learning how to make uh, resource and behavior packs. They collectively are smarter than any other person that, I, that exists. Just they have so much knowledge about Minecraft. The next thing we learned, behavior packs change the behavior of the world. Resource packs change the way that the world looks. Third thing we learned, we can make our own varied texture resource pack. You can apply this to any texture. The only thing you have to do is find a different block name and figure out from the example pack that is on Minecraft, that is on bedrock.dev. You can then figure out which block you want to change and change it however you would like. Third thing we've learned, if you subscribe to Mad Hatter, you will learn more stuff about this as the time goes on. Anyway, this is Mad Hatter and I'm out. Bye.